I've done it. I said it couldn't be done, but I've done it. I've found the greatest racing game of all time. It says it, uh, like right, right there. On the game box. They wouldn't put it there if it weren't true. Of course not. Balls Yeah, it's Moto Racer, developed by France-based Delphine Software and published by Electronic Arts in 1997 for Windows PCs and the Sony PlayStation. Though DSi was famous for all sorts of things, the lead developer on Moto Racer was actually none other than Paul Cusay. Yep, the same guy who developed games like The Stealth Affair, and most famously Flashback, and its sequel Fade to Black. Not entirely sure how I ended up with the Australian Limited Edition box here in America, but I did, and this is it. Not much different from the normal US release, except that it lacks the fold-out front cover from the American one. Yeah, the non-limited edition has a less awesome box than the regular edition, go figure that out. Oh well, it's still a sweet box, because it's big, and it has ink printed on it that I approve of. It also brings back waves of nostalgia, since the first time I saw this box was in a CompUSA store in Greensboro, North Carolina. The box was sitting proudly beside a PC showing off the new 3DFX Voodoo graphics card, and of course, this game was the one installed to show it off. This was one of the earlier games to really push 3D acceleration of the Glide, Matrox, and Direct 3D varieties. Inside the box, you get the game on a CD that for some reason has an Australian OFLC G rating on it, even though the box has the ESRB Kids to Adults rating from North America. You also get the game manual, which is surprisingly in-depth for such a simple arcade racing game. It covers everything a PC game should, from the basic game premise to every game mode, to how to tweak the graphics, troubleshoot all sorts of drivers, and more. Probably a good thing, since the game had a tendency to crap out with all the new DirectX software and drivers it used. Start the game and you're greeted with DSi's nice, classy opening animation. Followed by a burst of mid-90s in-your-face radicalness. Once Raphael Gisca's awesome soundtrack finishes melting your face, you're then told to enter your name in one of the single most awesome ways possible. Seriously, I've probably spent as much time typing names into this as I have spent playing the actual game. Those letters just look so cool. After you finish realizing you're too easily entertained, you can choose to play single or multiplayer modes, all while the announcer dude speaks out your choices. I love when games do this, it's such a nice mix of cheesiness and charm. Play solo. Select your mode. Select your race. Select your mode. Practice mode. You've got three main game modes to pick from. Practice, which allows you to practice race against the clock or up to 23 opponents for however many laps you want. Single race, which is the same as practice except you play the default options only. And championship, which takes you on a set career path of tracks and bikes and lets you unlock new tracks and game options along the way. There are two road tracks and two dirt tracks in the beginning, though you'll unlock two more of each by finishing the championship, and you can also download a new track of each type from DSi's website for free, taking the track total up to 10. And then you've got eight bikes for each type to choose from, each with their own color scheme and stats determining their strengths and weaknesses. Not sure why you'd choose one of the crazy unbalanced ones though, unless you just want to arbitrarily handicap yourself. Choose your destiny, and finally, you're on the starting line, and it's time to race some motos. Two, one, go! The controls are incredibly simple. Gas, brake, steering, and a key for popping wheelies. As you might have gathered by now, it's an arcade racer through and through, very much in the vein of games like Daytona USA and uh, perhaps more obviously Ridge Racer. It's fast, it's loud, it's easy to get into, and it's a lot of fun in short bursts. Beyond that, there's not a lot to it, but that's perfectly fine by me. It's one of those racing games where the only thing holding you back from a better lap time is yourself, since the driving model is so simple. 
Memorize the crap out of those tracks forwards and backwards, avoid crashing into enemies and walls, and as long as you've chosen the right bike for the track, you're good to go. Though there is a wee bit of strategy to use during the races in the form of wheelies. You can pop a wheelie for anywhere from a split second to several seconds, during which you will have a nice boost in speed but will have very little control of your steering. And if you hit anything while doing a wheelie, it's an instant crash. Knowing where and for how long you can manage to pull off successful wheelies is key to getting a good lap time and leaving the pack in the dust. Dirt track motocross racing is a bit different though since you'll have far more slippery and complex courses to handle as well as the ability to go airborne. Whether you're driving on dirt, mud, sand, or something else vaguely resembling poop, the handling is more loose than street racing but it's just as easy to get used to. However, dirt tracks bring a significant increase to the twists and turns you'll have to navigate as well as way more variation in track height. Each hill is a chance to get some air and even perform some tricks and stunts, though there is no reason to do so except that it looks cool. And even if you land while performing a stunt, you still don't crash from it, so you may as well just do stunts all over the place. You can still perform wheelies to speed up, but there are far fewer opportunities to do so safely, and you'll want to be careful when wheeling off a jump, since there's a chance you'll go flying into the invisible walls on the sides of the track and wipe out. If you're playing in championship mode, you'll eventually win and be rewarded with some new tracks and race options. The first option is reverse mode, which is exactly as it sounds. Play the same tracks as last time, except as the backwards man. The backwards man, you go backwards as fast as you can. In fact, you'll have to play all the same tracks again in reverse mode to unlock the next thing, pocket mode. That's right, all the bikes have been hit with a shrink ray and are now mini bikes, and although they have the same stats, they're all a bit faster and tougher to handle than previously. Can't say I'm a big fan of these, but whatever. It's like Revolt's clockwork carnage mode. It's cool that it's there, but I can live without it. And that's pretty much it for Moto Racer. Just keep playing over and over again to see all the cool track designs and maybe increase the difficulty for more of a challenge. Well, there are the multiplayer modes too, and really it's the same thing as all the other modes except that you can play with up to seven other real-life people instead of AI racers. You need to have a modem or network connection of some kind to play these, unless you've got the PS1 port, which featured split-screen racing. I was always jealous of that, freaking consoles being better than the PC for no good reason. But whatever, the PC version is superior in every other way, and I loved it. Frick, I still love this game, if only because of how simple it is. Start it up, choose a bike, go fast, do wheelies, tune in, drop out. Moto Racer is a fantastic example of 90s arcade racing, and I'd still recommend it if you like racers without a ton of bloat and just a load of raw fun. Is it the greatest racing game of all time? Eh, no, don't be ridiculous, but it's definitely the best Moto Racer by Delphine Software in 1997, and that's more than enough for me.